Fight for God's sakes! Everybody fight! For fighting itself is prayer, and through your prayers will you be granted miracles! Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to The Gamer's Den, with me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire, bringing you another fantastic episode of the Pathfinder War Priest Guide, today taking a look at the pinnacle of their spell casting with 6th level spells. But before we dig on through this, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there and hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at The Gamer's Den and join that awesome legendary roster of subscribers. Or, if you've already made yourself known with such a legendary crowd, then go on down there, hit the like button, and share the video far and wide to help us grow ever further. But now, we move on. So, when it comes to 6th level spells, you're going to get a lot of really good options, and in fact, there's a whole host of solid options as well, but we'll just leave ourselves to the uh, tippy top the very best spells that you can select because when it comes to six level spells you're not going to get a whole lot to play around with you don't have as many spell slots as uh, other spell casting classes will so to that end one of the first spells you want to pick up is heal heal is a standard action casting time it uh, affects the target touched and you heal 10 hit points per level maxing out at 150 and you will also remove ability damage, blinded, confused, dazed, dazzled, deafened, diseased, exhausted, fatigued, feeble-minded, insanity, nauseated, poisoned, sickened, and stunned. It won't remove negative levels, but it still takes off a whole host of just all kinds of ailments and status effects that can really negatively impact a character. And to top it off, Remember that you can use your Fervor ability to swift cast this as a swift action and keep your full round actions for, say, I don't know, full attacking or casting another spell if you really want to, depending on whatever the situation may be. Now, normally, I warn people to stay away from most of the healing spells just because mechanically, healing is better done outside of combat, uh, unless you are really, really desperate and need to keep a character up and in the fight. Uh, but with in heal's case, it just helps you to heal so much damage and remove so many different status effects that it's worthwhile to use even when you can't swift cast it. But the fact that you can, uh, just as a class ability even, and it doesn't force the spell to go up in spell slots, which you wouldn't be able to use anyways, this just makes it that much sweeter to use. So definitely, absolutely something you should have on your list, and it helps to make your character that much more of an immovable fanatic. But then, going on from there, we have Chains of Light. It's a standard action to cast, short range for that 25 feet plus 5 feet every two levels. You target one creature, and it lasts for one round per level. With a reflex save negating, no spell resistance is allowed, however. You paralyze a single target in chains of glowing light, while each round they are allowed to make a save to end the effect. While paralyzed, the, the target cannot use any extra-dimensional travel like astral projection, blink, dimension door, ethereal jaunt, etherealness, gate, maze, plane shift, shadow walk, teleport, and similar spells and spell-like abilities. So this is a great way for you to lock down a target that's likely to try to run away from you when the fight turns south. So, once that happens and you get them locked in place, that will afford you quite a bit of time, at least one round, to close the distance or do something else, like possibly buy the mage time to throw down a dimensional anchor spell on the area to help keep them further in place, and allow the rest of the party to gang up on and beat the ever-loving tar out of that target. And then, of course, we have more for you, why wouldn't we? We have Anti-Life Shell. To stand another standard action to cast, personal effect, it's a 10 foot radius lasting one minute per level. No saves and no spell resistance allowed. You create a hemispherical barrier of energy that moves with you to block most living creatures. This affects animals, aberrations, dragons, fey, giants, humanoids, magical beasts, monstrous humanoids, oozes, plants, and vermin, but not constructs, elementals, outsiders, or undead. 
moving into groups of these creatures will break the barrier, however, so you can't use it to offensively push and shift people around. You can only use this to block yourself and the area around you and cause them to funnel off into other areas. Why would you want to do this? Well, say you or another caster have put down traps or barriers that will cause damage, such as a flame wall or a blade barrier, something to that effect where you force enemies to go through that. And not only that, but if you have some means of, say, increasing your size, extending the reach of a reach weapon ever, even further outside of the barrier, then you can use this to pick at those targets that happen to come in too close to the uh, anti-life shell and just deal damage with very minimal threat to yourself, because nothing in the description says that this spell will drop if you're attacking, just only if you move into and press the barrier against... Um, the specified targets yourself. So it's definitely a really great one for you to have in your back pocket. But we have one last spell for you and it's another great one, actually one of my favorites, and that is Animate Object. It's a standard action to cast, medium range spell for that 100 feet plus 10 feet per level, and you affect one small object per caster level at one round per level. So, you imbue objects of non-magical materials with mobility and can designate targets to attack. Medium objects will count as two small objects, large as four, huge as eight, gargantuan as sixteen small objects, and colossal as thirty-two. You can change the selected target or targets as a move action, but the something to note is that you cannot affect carried objects, and this can also be made permanent. And how is this handy for you? Well, it's a force multiplier. If you are the kind of diehard fanatic that has other faithful servants of the church haul platforms through using oxen to bring statues to the battlefield, you can animate those statues and now have unliving warriors alongside you. And it's even better if they're large or even huge statues made of some solid stone like granite or marble. Is they're tough, they're durable, and the damage they deal is significant, and especially with their reach. You can use anti-life to help funnel them away from you and into the clutches and reach of these statues. And they can be in the forms of avenging angels, conniving demons, um, horrific devils, or even just gargoyle kind of shapes meant to ward off evil. These different kinds of things are all possible, and how fitting is it the image of a war priest standing to the last at their temple, dealing death to the heretics who would undo the workings of the church and bringing to life the very edifices meant to decorate the temple itself. Absolutely perfectly fitting, it's a great one to have, and definitely something you should consider to have in your spell list. But these are, of course, not the only spells. There are other great spells on this list. You have things like Greater Dispel Magic, Airwalk, uh, Point of Recall. You ha There's also a suite of other really solid spells as well, things that would get a green rating. There's, of course, also terrible things like uh, oh, Bestow Mind. What's that, Bestow Mind? Uh, I forget. I'm spacing on the name at the moment, still not 100% recovered here, <laughs> but there's still just so many good spells to have. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. What other spells would you include there? Certainly, I think Greater Dispel Magic is a solid choice. I'm not a fan of the uh, Mass Bull's Strength or any of the other Mass versions of those stat buffing spells just because... Uh, at this point, it's not that huge of a benefit for you, particularly if you and your party have magic items to help boost those already. But then again, I could very well be wrong, so let me know your thoughts down below. Hit the like or dislike button in either case, and as I said before, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there and hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, I've been Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.